What is going on guys? Will here, welcome to the video. I'm excited for this one, because this week I'm gonna be trying the Vertical Diet, a diet created by Stan Efferding. He's an IFBB pro bodybuilder and an elite level power lifter. He's even referred to as the world's strongest bodybuilder. So this diet is a culmination of over 30 years of research, studying, coaching, training, and competing to improve body composition for optimal health and performance. This diet claims to optimize gut health, correct nutrient deficiencies, and balance out your hormones. It also promises to improve energy, endurance, and recovery in athletes. So I'm very interested to see how this diet is gonna go and see how my energy levels are gonna be throughout the day and especially in the gym because guess what this diet does not have coffee so a lot of people seem to think that the vertical diet is just white rice and red meat guess what you're wrong if you go on the internet and search vertical diet you most often run into this image right here so this summarizes the diet very very well so the diet consists of highly bioavailable micronutrients and easily digestible macronutrients so in the vertical axis you have your macronutrients of white rice and red meat this makes up the bulk of the calories and on the horizontal axis you have your micronutrients that were specifically chosen as they are particularly nutrient dense and the goal is to only consume them in appropriate amounts and no more than that so once your body hits optimal micronutrient needs you stop there and fill in the rest of your calories with the vertical foods so I'm gonna try my best to explain why each food is in the diet and the role that they play. But right now, let's get into meal number one. Made a little bit of a country scramble here as shown on the Vertical Diet website. I'll probably use that website for inspiration for probably all my meals this week. So in here we have four whole eggs. You wanna have at least two eggs a day. Eggs are very rich in choline and biotin. Biotin's good for your hair, skin, and nails have sauteed spinach and peppers. So you wanna have daily sauteed spinach or peppers or both if you want to. Uh, rich in vitamins, fiber, calcium, and omega-3s. Have a serving of cheese in here and then some sweet potatoes for some potassium. And then on the side, four ounces of orange juice for my daily orange. You can have orange juice or a fresh orange. So oranges are good for vitamins, minerals, anti-estrogen, and it's a good liver stimulant. So gonna down this and then go get some groceries. Okay, so I'm back from the grocery run and let me tell you right now, this is not a budget friendly diet because right here in front of me is like three days worth of food and it cost me nearly a hundred dollars. But this is what I got. So I got a massive bag of white rice. Gonna be eating a ton of this. For the meat, I picked up 100% grass fed lamb sausages from New Zealand. Pretty cool. Couple packs of lean ground beef and some flank steak. So why white rice? Why white? That's pretty hard to say, why white rice? So why white rice and why red meat? So white rice is very easy to eat, a lot of it, very easy to digest and won't cause you to bloat. And then the red meat is a very high quality cut of protein full of zinc, iron, and B vitamins. The other stuff I picked up were a couple of fresh oranges, just in case I don't wanna have orange juice, just to mix it up a little bit. Got a thing of 100% pure organic cranberry juice, because you're supposed to have two four ounce servings of this per day. Uh, got some red skin potatoes, a sweet potato, and then I got a package of some baby carrots because also along with the cranberry juice, you have a couple servings of baby carrots for the day as well. Got a massive thing of spinach, uh, some chicken stock, and then usually on my normal diet, I eat a ton of 0% Greek yogurt, but on the vertical diet, you want to have full fat dairy. So I picked up 11% Greek yogurt, which I'm assuming is going to be incredible. And that was the grocery run. Meal number two of the day is gonna be seven ounces of flank steak, some white rice, and some baby carrots alongside four ounces of cranberry juice. So cranberry juice is a very good source of antioxidants and iodine. The baby carrots are for anti-estrogen and detoxing the body. So you don't wanna cook the carrots. They gotta be raw. Just like many things in life, raw is the way to go. And the reason why you don't wanna cook them is because it's gonna lose its fiber content and the fiber is what helps shuttle the toxins out of the body. So this meal looks really good. And I think my biggest concern this week Maybe not just this week, pretty much every single day is just not overeating. I have a very big appetite and I purposely keep white rice out of my diet on a normal day because 
It's very easy to eat. There's a lot of calories and I just tend to overeat it like crazy. So we'll see what happens. Okay guys, it's 6 p.m. and I'm absolutely starving. So for dinner, I'm gonna be making Stan's favorite meal, which is called the Monster Mash. So here I have some white rice in a bowl, two cups, which I made a little bit earlier. And then what I'm gonna do is add some ground beef to it. So he usually likes to use bison, but I can't find it anywhere. So hopefully a little bit later on this week, I can find it. So I'm gonna add around eight ounces. Ground beef, white rice is like a typical meal. But what he likes to do is add some chicken stock. So we can stand those. Everything's better when it's just a little bit wet. So we're gonna add three quarters of a cup to the bowl. And what chicken stock does, it actually uh, causes the stomach to release pepsin, which greatly aids in the digestion of the meat. And what we're gonna do is mash it up. So hence monster mash. And there we go. So that's the infamous monster mash. So probably gonna have this with some more baby carrots and then probably a little bit later tonight I have a couple raw nuts of the almond variety. Not what some of you guys are thinking. So let's give this a little taste test. I'm getting a reading. It's pretty good. So overall today we went really, really well. Other than the fact that I've been starving the whole entire day, digestion's good, don't feel bloated, no sort of gas. So day one, pretty good. Workout complete, had a ton of energy, went very well. But this morning when I woke up, I was starving. Usually I can get up and wait one to two hours and then have my breakfast, but today I had to eat pretty much immediately. So the vertical diet is a lot more than just a diet and the food that you eat. There's also a big lifestyle component to it as well. Like when to work out, when to wake up, when to go to sleep, what to do when you wake up and what to do after every meal. So Stan even said himself, you can train hard, you can train long, but you can't do both. So what he likes to do is split his session up into AM and PM sessions. So that's exactly what I'm doing this week. So I'm taking my regular workout and just cutting it in half. So I'm doing three now and three later. Later. Probably get a bigger bang for your buck, lift some more weight, lift with some more intensity. So does your 1 a.m. booty call count as an a.m. or p.m. session? Well, quite frankly, I don't count 30 seconds as a workout and neither should you. So let's try out this yogurt. So this is the one I usually have right here. So for 175 grams, 100 calories, zero fat, 18 grams of protein. And the one I'm having today is still 175 grams, but 220 calories. So over double the calories, 16 grams of fat. So 16 times the fat and nine grams of protein, so half of the protein. So this one is 11%, which I think is gonna be thicker and therefore better, because like many things, it's better when it's just a little bit thicker. Let's get into this one, I'm excited. It smells a little bit sour. Okay. Even running my spoon through this is a new experience. Oh, that's decadent. That's good. It has a cream cheesiness to it. It's like reassuring me I'm eating dairy right now. This just tastes like it was like straight out of the udder. So rich, tastes so fresh. Wow. So I ended up adding some blueberries to my yogurt. So don't think that you have to be limited to the foods that I showed you guys in that image at the beginning of the video. What you have to choose is low FODMAP foods, which are foods that don't cause gas, stomach pain, and bloating. So this diet's actually a lot less restrictive than what people think. So as long as you look online and look at the lists, you should be good to go. I don't know if you can tell, but I went through some severe caffeine withdrawals right now. My head is throbbing. I can't even have any artificial sweeteners and I'm guilty of drinking a whole lot of them. So I gotta find something to keep me going. Luckily, it looks like white powders are still in play. But currently on a 10 minute walk after my meal, cause you're supposed to go for a 10 minute walk after every meal on the vertical diet cause it's considered healthy. Meanwhile, on a cheat day, it's considered a walk of shame. But why you really wanna go for the 10 minute walks is cause it aids in digestion, improves insulin sensitivity and nutrient partitioning. Okay, so it's dinner time and not so fun fact. As a kid, I used to absolutely love lamb but then this one time I had a very 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 bad experience with it and I haven't had it since but today I'm gonna give it a try so I'm making one of those lamb sausages and it's been like 11 years since I've had lamb so let's see what I think about it Katie's here making pizza that I cannot partake in and I'm extremely jealous all right so for dinner I have some white rice with some chicken stock and some zucchini the low gas vegetables with some more baby carrots and the lamb sausage along with my second four ounce cup of cranberry juice so let's give this lamb sausage, a taste test. It looks to be about five inches. I'm pretty good at ballparking these things. So about average size, depending on where you're from. So let's see. I'm getting like a, a barnyardish taste in my mouth. It just tastes like a slightly off beef. It's like if I made a regular sausage and I put it in my attic and then I moved out and then someone moved back in and then they had it and that person is me. I don't like it, I don't know. I'm still gonna eat it because Whatever you put in front of me, I'll eat. Well, that was day two of being vertical. We'll let her finish her pizza and then we'll probably go do something horizontal.
Good morning, everyone. I feel great. Had a very deep sleep, not feeling tired at all. I actually have tons of energy right now. And my room, surprisingly, doesn't smell too bad because usually when I wake up, it smells like a gorilla den from all the protein farts. But I'd like to thank my sleep qualities due to no caffeine, no sugar alcohols, and my body not digesting so much food. So Stan is a huge advocate of sleep. He says that of all the things that he's researched and studied over the years, sleep is the most important thing. That's often something that a lot of us overlook. We just look at the workouts and the diet, but we don't look at the sleep and what we do outside of the gym. When he broke three world records and squatted 900 five pounds he was sleeping 11 hours a day so nine hours a night and then two one hour naps throughout the day uh, so on this diet he really emphasizes sleep and he likes to tell people to go to bed around 10 o'clock anytime before midnight because one hour of sleep before midnight is apparently two hours in the bank so i went to bed at 11 it was a little bit difficult for me to go to bed at 10 but it does wonders. So it's currently 10 a.m. right now, just doing some meal prep, have a couple of steaks right here, some salmon and then the rice cooker is going inside. So I think it's especially important on this diet to do your meal prep because you can't really just grab anything and go because you can't really have anything processed in a package. So I think it's in my best interest to kind of just cook my food for the day. So that way, if I need to go, I can just grab it out of the fridge and go. So I mean, overall, I'm eating tons of steak, but I'm having a good time. Okay, time to eat again. So I packed two meals with me because I'm at Katie's house right now. So this is what I brought. So for lunch, I'm going to be having salmon because you're supposed to have salmon twice a week, a fatty fish for the good fats. So my lunch right here is going to be six ounces of salmon, some baby carrots, and then I have here white rice, some chicken stock, sauteed spinach and bell peppers. And then my dinner is going to be like, a, like this is like two pounds of food, a ton of rice, exact same thing in there, but then just added 10 ounces of steak, strip loin steak and flank steak. So guys, if you're a hard gainer and you can't gain weight, this is the diet for you. My breakfast this morning was 770 calories and I digested it in like 30 minutes and I worked out and the workout was amazing. So if you're looking to gain weight, vertical diet is just king. Salmon is so good. So the vertical diet is not just for gaining weight. You can lose weight on it as well. The only thing you gotta do is just watch the amount of white rice that you're consuming. So you can easily do the vertical diet in a low carb version, maybe swap out the white rice with like some butternut squash. You never wanna take away from the meat and your micronutrients. <laughs> Another day, another country scramble. Went fairly aggressive on the spinach today, but I must say I am enjoying these country scramble things. But does anybody know why they're called the country scramble? Is it like you go to the countryside and everyone's just eating things with scrambled eggs mashed up all together? I don't know, it's just one of the few things keeping me up at night. So here is my breakfast this morning. I have three whole eggs, some egg whites, cheese, spinach, and red peppers, a full large orange, and some baby carrots. So I'd like to say that this week's been a success so far. I'd say the only negative is that I feel like I'm eating in a calorie deficit, even though I'm eating at maintenance, 3000 calories. These meals are just not filling enough and white rice doesn't do it for me. But I feel like the positives are definitely outweighing the negative. Like I feel great throughout the day. Sleep is awesome. My energy throughout the day is awesome. Don't have a crash after I eat. I don't have like the need to lie down like I sometimes would. No gas, no bloating. Uh, I'm a lot more regular in the washroom if you guys wanna know. I feel like those 10 minute walks are definitely helping. It's a lot more of a, a fluid experience in the toilet, not so much of a, a battle as it sometimes is. So I think my game plan for the next couple of days is to adopt more of a low carb vertical diet approach. Instead of like white rice constantly, I'll throw in some more veggies and some more butternut squash and maybe swap out every single meal being red meat to more like chicken and turkey. I'll still have my one mandatory serving of red meat a day, but I think after that, that's gonna be it. So I can have more volume of food. So right now I'm gonna go in and work out my AM workout. I've been loving the two times a day workouts and they have just been fantastic. And then I'm gonna go to the grocery store, try and find bison to make some bison monster mash. And then we're gonna order food tonight. Okay, so we went to a coffee shop. I got this orange hibiscus decaf tea drink. It's pretty good. Katie has or had a cold brewed coffee that she devoured in a minute. Easy there, slugger. So me going to a coffee shop and not getting a coffee is a lot like a, an Instagram model doing a booty workout and not posting it. Just, it doesn't happen. But I surprisingly don't miss caffeine as much as I thought I was going to. So that is good news. But we have been on the bison hunt all morning. We went to two places, they didn't have it. Then we were like, let's go to Costco. They for sure have it. And they're like, no, we don't. You gotta order it online. We don't carry it in the store. And I was like, that is pretty wild to me. So we are on the hunt for bison. I'm gonna find that meat. I always find my meat and I'll update you guys soon.
So I just made a low carb alternative of the monster mash. So instead of white rice, I added butternut squash that I cooked in chicken stock. Then I added the bison. I have a few baby carrots here. So the bison was $10.99, which is insanely expensive for the amount that I got. It was 280 grams. So it's like, it tastes like a little bit of a sweeter beef. It's really good, very lean, similar macros to chicken and turkey. So this doesn't really look that great, but I can assure you it is amazing. Probably one of the best things I've had all week. Okay, so we ended up getting Greek food for dinner because Greek food's quite the vertically friendly cuisine, I'd like to think. So I got a chicken Slovakia dinner, which is just chicken breast, rice, and potatoes. And then on the side, I got a Greek salad with no onions because onions is not allowed on the diet. So Greek food actually also caters to her breed of people, AKA the vegans. So I'm gonna start with the salad first. You always start with the, the worst thing first. And then even though it's still amazing, and then you work your way to the good stuff. The Greek potatoes, I don't even know what the Greeks do to those things. They're practically cocaine, they're so addictive. So lettuce, tomatoes, and cucumber are all fair game. And I'm assuming the feta is full fat dairy, as well as the tzatziki. So pretty much everything here is completely fine. I think Greek salad is far superior to Caesar salad. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Do you guys agree? Let me know. I think Caesar salad, after I have it, I feel gross. And you shouldn't feel gross after you eat a salad. I don't know if it's just me, but these potatoes, especially the Greek ones, Kind of remind me of a bald man. Because they're so smooth and shiny. All right, <clears throat> well, I'm gonna save this rice for another meal tomorrow. That's gonna do it for today. That was really good. I'd say that was like a nine out of 10. I think my only concern is that I just wanted more chicken and more potatoes, so. See you guys in the morning. Just wrapped up my last workout on the vertical diet, having the post-workout shake right now. So in here I have orange juice for the fructose, I have dextrose powder, salt, 600 milligrams of sodium, and some caffeine. So I just crushed up a caffeine pill, 100 milligrams of that in here. So what caffeine does is it just helps shuttle the nutrients into the muscle just a little bit faster. So no protein and no fat for the post-workout shake. So the claims of this diet have not been scientifically proven, but I seem to think that there must be a lot of truth to it because there are some high level elite athletes following this diet that I'll put somewhere on the screen right now. So this week has been a solid week of training for me. I had a lot of endurance, a lot of energy, hit some rep PRs. It didn't have the need to like rest between sets as long as I usually do. And I've just been dripping sweat in the gym. I usually don't sweat in the gym, but this week has just been falling on the floor. Can't explain why just, but it's been good. So solid week of training. On to my second and last serving of salmon for the week. Have some white rice, potatoes, baby carrots, and almonds to go alongside it. So I've been doing four meals a day, not including the post-workout shake. Space three to four hours apart, trying to get around 40 grams of protein per meal as recommended by the vertical diet. So a lot less protein than what I'm accustomed to. I'd normally get around 250 grams of protein on my typical diet. So maybe the reduction in protein is why I feel so great, a lot less gas, stomach pain, and bloating. So I'm definitely gonna take some stuff I've learned this week and implement it to my diet going forward. And I highly recommend you guys give it a shot because I just feel great. So I have been doing my 10 minute walks in my backyard lately the past couple days because I've been having some tummy troubles. It's like a faucet back there. You eat a meal, it doesn't even want to make itself at home even for a little bit in your stomach. It just wants to come right out. So if you go for a 10 minute walk and you leave your house, especially at the beginning of this diet, you are rolling the dice. You are playing a game of roulette. It's you versus your other end because you can just be walking. You feel all good and all of a sudden, and there's no going back. So I have become a lover of the Monster Mash. Absolutely love it. Even adding the chicken stock just adds this like element of lube to the meal that I desire, especially when you eat for speed like I do. So I'm gonna add this, but nothing beats the uh, bison and squash Monster Mash I had the other day. That is gonna be a staple in my diet going forward. That is for sure. I've also noticed that my skin has improved. It's a little bit like smoother. And I don't get those like flare ups on my cheeks as much as I would on my normal diet. I think that's because of like the food selection, less processed food, less caffeine. So I just think it's overall a healthy diet to follow. So yeah, if you have keratosis pilaris or you have any sort of skin condition, an anti-inflammatory diet could be for you. So it's a little after 10 in the evening. I've been going to bed every single night at 10.30 and waking up every single day at 5.30. Stan says it's very important to establish a strict sleep and wake schedule. Going to bed at the same time every night and waking up at the same time every day. You feel a lot more energetic throughout the day and don't feel as drowsy. And I would have to agree, I've been feeling great. So I'm gonna get ready to go to bed soon and then I'll see you guys in the morning to talk about my overall thoughts on the vertical diet. 
What a week, what a week. I think overall it went pretty well. I think the only negative thing to report was I was just left hungry quite often throughout the day. So I stepped on the scale this morning and I was 178.2 pounds, which means I lost 0.4 of a pound, which I was pretty surprised about because I ate over my calories like four of the seven days. I ate 3,200 instead of 3,000. I was just late at night. I had to have a couple of servings of Greek yogurt if I wanted to go to bed. But I think the reason why I lost weight is because I was so regular on the toilet, like it was, pretty insane. I can't remember the last time I went to the washroom as much as I did this week, but throughout the day, I felt great, had constant energy. I didn't have any crashes, didn't have to lie down after a meal. Uh, you know, my workouts were awesome, tons of energy. I, my performance was high. I was sweating a lot in the gym, which I didn't do for quite a long time. So this was a very eye-opening experience for me to not put so much shit in my body, so much artificial sweeteners and caffeine, and to focus more on getting my micronutrients in. So I highly recommend you guys give this a shot, and I'm definitely going to implement some of the stuff I learned this week into my diet going forward. I don't see myself going fully into this vertical diet, but I'm definitely gonna adopt some of the stuff that they did. Like that Monster Mash was just unbelievable. So yeah, I highly recommend giving this a shot. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next one.